fungal acne does not exist. What? If fungal acne doesn't exist, why are so many people talking about it online? What are these white, red, pimple-like bumps? And how do we know the difference between this and acne? I'm glad you asked because today we are going to break down the science of skin and the biochemistry of beauty, talk about what this malassezia or pterosperm folliculitis actually is because it sounds confusing, but it's really not that bad, and overall what your options are if you have this on your face and what information you might want to bring to your doctor to talk about. So to break this down a little bit more, Fungal acne technically does not exist, but there is this condition that a lot of people are dealing with. It looks like acne, but it comes from a different source, and it feels different, it looks a little bit different, and it even shows up in different places on the skin. The biggest difference is the actual cause. This guy has a name. It's Malassezia folliculitis. What the hell does that mean? Well, Malassezia is a yeast or a fungus, and it's actually natural on our skin. And folliculitis, well, follicula is like follicle, and Itis means inflammation of. And if you've watched this channel, you know that you have little hair follicles, little pores all over your face. So folliculitis is just inflammation of this little pore. And remember, this is where your body produces oil, and this is where acne bacteria hangs out. It's also where malassezia can hang out, and why this can be an issue, and why it's so confusing. Before we talk about treatment, let's talk about why this is not acne. Acne, by definition, is caused by something called Cutibacterium acnes because it's cute, I guess? I don't know. This cutibacterium acne naturally lives on our skin. It's friends with malassezia. Malassezia is completely different. It's like a different gender and a different race, but they both live on your skin naturally and keep you happy and healthy. But unfortunately, when acne bacteria hangs out in your hair follicle and eats up the oil, it can become a comedone, otherwise known as a pimple. Malassezia does the same thing. It hangs out on your skin naturally, but like the acne bacteria, if it hangs out in the follicle and if it eats your oil, then it can over overproduce, which also causes issues, specifically folliculitis, that follicle inflammation. Fun fact, these guys have been roommates for a really long time, but they both actually had different names to begin with. Cutibacterium acnes used to be Propionibacterium acnes, and Malassezia folliculitis used to be Pterosperum folliculitis. Why scientists decided to change the name, I'm not exactly sure, but we're gonna roll with it. <laughs> well, here's the thing, because the acne comes from bacteria and this malassezia comes from yeast, they have to be treated differently, even though they can look the same. What are the main differences when they actually show up on the face? And what might tip you or your doctor off if you're suffering from this instead of regular acne? You see, regular acne can be inflammatory. It can be red, and you can have little bumps or big bumps. Sometimes they're here on the jaw, sometimes they're here on the nose or in the T-zone. They could even be on the chest and the back and all over the place. Malassezia folliculitis can also be pretty much everywhere, but it normally happens up here on the forehead and in the V of the chest and down on the back. The other thing about malassezia is that it looks monomorphic. What does that word mean? Well, mono means same. And when you look at this malassezia, they all kind of look the same around the same size and they're very round in shape. When you look at acne, the lesions are in different stages. Some might be brand new and tiny and others might be big, red, and angry. So that's one kind of hint. The other is that malassezia normally itches. People who have this might talk about their acne being itchy, not realizing that it's not actually acne, it's a fungal or a yeast overgrowth instead. And again, this can be tough because both of these can happen together. Remember the acne bacteria and the malassezia yeast, they're roommates, so they both live on your skin naturally, and it's just when they have the right conditions that they get out of control. And if they're throwing a party and getting out of control together, you might have gone to your dermatologist for a diagnosis or a pill or a cream. They look at it and maybe all they were able to see was the acne because the malassezia is hidden between or isn't as red or as angry. The other telltale sign that you might want to look for is acne that doesn't go away, especially if you've used a lot of over-the-counter treatments such as benzoyl peroxide. There's scientific proof showing that benzoyl peroxide works really well on acne. But remember, malassezia isn't acne, so if these little white and red bumps that are monomorphic and look the same just aren't going away, maybe you've been trying to treat it with the wrong things. Your dermatologist or doctor may have even prescribed antibiotics. Antibiotics are literally anti, or not, biotic. 
bio meaning life or bacteria. Antibiotics can be put on the skin topically or eaten orally, and they literally kill acne bacteria. But again, what if this isn't acne? What if it's not from bacteria? It's from a fungus, a yeast. That needs to be treated differently. The good thing is that there are things over the counter, such as stuff you can get from the drugstore, or a prescription that you can get from your doctor that you can either use topically, or there are oral pills that could help. The way I kind of like to think about this is like a cat and a dog in the rain. Think of the cat as acne and the dog as malassezia. If you put them both outside and it starts raining, aka antibiotics, the cat's gonna be like, ah! hell no, and he's gonna run inside because the cat doesn't like the rain. But for the dog, he doesn't care if it's raining, aka antibiotics. He's like, eh, this doesn't phase me. I'm just gonna have a great time. And that's why people who have malassezia, this fungal yeast overgrowth, the dog, doesn't matter because, again, those antibiotics, that rain, doesn't have any impact on them. Of course, this is one of those things that you can't diagnose on your own. You need to go to a doctor or dermatologist to get a definitive diagnosis. But as with all skincare, there are things that you can do at home to keep up with your skincare routine and ingredients that you can look for or that you can bring to your doctor and ask about. And let's specifically talk about the ingredients that are better for acne and the ingredients that are specifically better for this malassezia. Again, things like benzoyl peroxide or certain acids work really well on acne, but for malassezia, something like sulfur is going to be a better bet. There are antifungal creams that your doctor can prescribe you, or there are things like zinc that might be able to help. Sulfur is a really cool ingredient. It works on both acne and malassezia, and a lot of people who do have malassezia, aka this fungal acne, have found that sulfur works really well for them. Something else you might want to look at is even clay. You see, what's interesting about malassezia is that it grows in places that are oily. And guess what part of your body produces oil? the sebaceous units inside of your face. Like most living things, in order for malassezia to stay alive, it needs to eat. And it feeds on the oils inside of your skin and inside of your skincare. So naturally, if you can use certain products that help to get rid of the oil, you can kind of starve this little yeast out. This is specifically why skincare products that have things like betonite or kaolin clay can be really helpful, because those ingredients naturally wick up the oil. Unfortunately, a lot of skincare products do contain oil. And if you don't know that you're suffering with this malassezia overgrowth, it's really easy to try new products that might have certain oils or certain esters in them that are making the problem worse. You're basically feeding this little fungus more of what it likes. The dog is in the backyard tearing up the grass. You don't want him there, but you keep on feeding him bones. That's not how you get him off your lawn. <laughs> the malassezia loves oil, so avoid skincare with most oils in it. A lot of athletes get this, especially if they leave their clothing on on, um, after they've worked out and don't remove it. And a lot of people who live in humid climates tend to suffer with this because again, this fungus really likes it when it's hot. Even hormones or starting or stopping your birth control can trigger it because your birth control is impacting your hormones. And unfortunately, your hormones directly correlate to how much oil your skin produces, which is again, what this malassezia likes to eat. So what sort of oils should you avoid? Well, when it comes to fatty acids and oils, there are different types. There are short chain medium chain, long chain, and very long chain. And the long chain ones seem to be the problem. So basically, most of the lengths of chains are okay unless it is a long chain. And you're probably sitting here thinking, okay, I've got my skincare cream. How am I supposed to know if this oil is short, medium, long, or Frickin' tetrahedral. I hate to say this, but this is where Google can come in. You could literally say, hey Siri, is olive oil a long chain fatty acid? And she'll be like, yes, b and then you'll know not to use it on your face. Or you could be like, hey Siri, is coconut oil a long chain fatty acid? And she'll be like, no, b that's a medium chain. You could be like, hey Siri, is jojoba oil a long chain fatty acid? And she'll be like, no, that's not even technically an oil. Technically, it's like a liquid wax. Um, I normally recommend not using the internet to understand your skincare because unfortunately the internet is not a library, it is a dumpster. However, this is one case where if you're trying to look up a specific oil that you found on the back label of your skincare because you remembered to turn and learn and you want to know is it short chain, is it very long chain, is it medium chain, this is one place that I do recommend doing that. And again, it's the long chain ones that really are the issue. But again, remember, this is only if you actually have fungal acne. If you have regular acne, it doesn't matter. So when it comes to actually having fungal acne, how do you know? As with any disease or condition, a doctor or dermatologist has to diagnose it. But the good thing is that it's not hard. Sometimes doctors just look at the skin, and unfortunately, 
because malassezia does look like regular acne and it can even look like rosacea. Um, it can be hard to tell, but in the office there's a really quick check that they can do and it's called a woods lamp. This lamp shoots a special light at your skin and a doctor or dermatologist can look through it and actually see if this yeast is growing on your skin. Another thing they can do is a potassium hydroxide solution. They basically mix a little bit of the scrapings of your skin in a little dish with a special formula and then they look at it underneath a microscope and they can actually see whether or not malassezia is overgrowing on your skin. They're both really easy to do, but again, it's something that a doctor needs to do. But while you're there, you can also ask about specific prescriptions or creams. There is a topical cream, again, one that goes on top of the skin that's called ketoconazole. Um, that's the active ingredient, and the brand name is Nizerol. You can ask for this, and again, it's specifically targeted towards this yeast, towards this malassezia. So there's a pretty good chance that for most people it works. You could also ask for fluconazole, which is an oral antifungal, again, one that you ingest. Even though benzoyl peroxide and oral antibiotics won't help because those are for acne, there are these other treatments that really work well for people who have this condition because, again, it's specifically targeting the malassezia yeast. It's also important to remember that people who have a fungal overgrowth like this might also have other things going on. There's a condition called tinea versicolor. It kind of looks like hypopigmentation, kind of like these white scarry spots on the skin, but it's actually this fungal infection. Or you could have seborrheic dermatitis. And when we break down that word, derm means skin and itis means inflammation of. Sub, like seborrhea or sebaceous unit, is talking about the oil of the skin. So this is a condition where a little bit of too much oiliness, usually that happens here on the scalp, creates inflammation of the skin. And if you've had one of these conditions before, and if you have this acne that just doesn't seem to go away, and they do look modern Morphic, this is definitely something you want to take to your doctor because, again, maybe you were trying to treat acne when acne wasn't the problem the whole time. If you enjoyed the skin science in this video, make sure that you that like button and don't forget to whoosh that subscribe button if you haven't already. Another video diving into the science of skincare can be found right here, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.